Tesla Semi is coming in hot. Uh, maybe not so hot, but it does look like the project is still in the works. We're going to look at some of the numbers and some of the competition, perhaps. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> me as he is, sometimes is required to uh under mandate from the king uh is randy kirk best-selling author pretty good guy i guess <laughs> and uh all around fun feller uh randy uh did you hear this week uh somebody at tesla uh, announced uh made it known that they've got a hundred semis uh that have been built and are in operation what's that about well, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, all of us, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Semi fan. I mean, Semi is probably like number three after Optimus. And I don't, and I love the Semi and I'm just so excited that it would get out there and it's got so many benefits. And Lars finally says, look, we've only made a hundred. He didn't say we've only, he says, yeah, we've got a hundred. Um, and I'm thinking a hundred <laughs> after, anyway, but. I guess they wanted to test them and in real world situations, uh, maybe there was other constraints like batteries or who knows what, whatever was going on. Maybe it was just, you know, Elon was maybe a little last year, a little bit like oh, the economy, the economy, whatever it was, they only made a hundred, but he did say, we are going to be ramping it up in 2024. So that was pretty exciting. Yeah. You're a big semi fan. I'm a semi fan of yours too, but, the thing with it is they've been iterating. I'm 100% confident that this has just been an extended testing period. So if there's 100, uh, where are they? Because we've still only seen the handful with the Pepsi and Frito livery. Uh, where are the rest? Do, any guesses? Have, I don't have. Well, first of all, I do believe that they have shipped a few other actually, you know, end customers where they are testing and finding out how they operate in different environments. I don't know that for a fact, but it seems to me we might have heard here and there about a few other folks picking up a few. But uh, no, uh, in terms of, uh, Pepsi has what, 30 something, I think? Something like that. Right, so that would leave you know 60 more to be somewhere. All right, they're, they're using some themselves. That's it, they're, yes. they're apparently using them internally, wow. which is, Great. That's a great use because you get unlimited control over how they're used. Right. Uh, and you get instant access to the vehicle for testing, calibration, configuration, whatever you right. need. Right. Um, I've got some theories. I will ask you first, what do you think is the delay in mass production of the semi? Because I don't think it's the economy. The economy does fine. You know, shipping remains strong during economic downturns. That's I not know, like there would be. I know. I, I still think I just I, I know we had I think we had this discussion last week on your channel or my channel. I just feel like Elon really was nervous. He liked mm. having 22 billion in the bank. And he was like, you know what, if we're a year late on the semi and we're a year late on, you know, building out the new production of batteries in Reno or whatever, if we don't start building that building, We'll save some of that 22 billion. And then, okay, we maybe we don't need to. St I think he just pulled back. I think he was nervous. That's my 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 biggest theory. Now, could there have been less 4680s than people thought, or other things? Yes, but there's been this massive battery overproduction. There's been the price of batteries have gone down 66 percent or something. I mean, you know, it seemed like you could find a way to make the batteries that are out there work in the anyway I, I'll so let you, I'll i will let add you. some perspective on that okay. right. these are built using the 2170 the fact that uh 2170s are a constraint and we i didn't know that i had heard it but i didn't know it until we saw that some fremont built teslas will lose the federal credit in january yes, yes. that means that they're they are in fact using lg 2170s right. from korea if the 4680 ramp had gone better, not only would Cybertruck be using them, but everything out of Texas would be using them. We know the Model Y for a time was using them. Mm -hmm. uh, those 2170s would first go to Fremont for all of those cars, right. and then whatever's left would go to the semi. If they don't have enough to cover even Fremont, they certainly don't have enough to cover semi. So if the 4680 ramp goes well, 
we can get the 2170s back into the Model Y, get it back under federal, uh, the threes and Ys out of, out of Fremont, get those back under the IRA uh, for full credit, and then uh, have enough left to build the semi. When is Panasonic's new building supposed to start ramping? It's supposed to be an extension of the existing building, unless you no, mean no, the I'm one in Oklahoma. I'm sorry, not, a, yeah, the one, yeah. Yeah, in Oklahoma. So that was supposed to be a 4680 factory, but that oh. has switched to oh. a 2170 factory because there is something vexing about the 4680. And when I had a chance to talk with uh, Jen Gowdy from Tesla, who is a, uh, she works at the service center in Portland now, but she was at Cato Road in the battery uh, in the 4680 plant. Um, she gave a little presentation to the uh, Oregon Electric Vehicles uh, Owners Association and was very tight-lipped. I tried to keep the questions about brands other than Tesla, and she saw right through it. So Tesla corporate, if you're watching this, Jen has not leaked a thing, and it drives me crazy. Uh, she's great, uh, except as a source where she's useless to me. So uh, there's something about the 4680 that's making it challenging, and I don't know what it is. And if she okay. told me why Panasonic is struggling, I think it would uncover why Tesla's struggling see, as well. I see. So they would, but they're switching to 2170s. Those would still be domestically made. Those could still go right. to Texas very quickly right. and easily. Um, and that factory should be online this year. Mm -hmm. That will alleviate some of the constraints. I think the next constraint is <sighs> talent in Reno oh, is yeah. talent in Sparks is sparse. Sparse. So you can attract people there, but it's harder. The weather is not for everyone. There's not a bunch of, you know, a rich culture of things to do. Right. right. Um, I said, well, I love uh, camping and hiking. Please move there and build me a semi. I don't know what to say. Now, when you look at the competition, have you, by the way, have you looked at who else is making electric semis? Yeah, I had actually had somebody on my show about nine months ago who was an expert in, you may remember, he was, he did the rounds there for a little while. We should probably look him up and see what he's doing now. Uh, but he was talking about some of the European makers and what they were doing and, you know, making the comparisons and contract. And it wasn't even close. It's I mean, not close. And I don't think it's close now. I think it's still, I don't think there's been a lot of improvement in the other manufacturers in terms of, we, they had a year. They had an extra year to do the catch-up. And there's no evidence that they've taken advantage of that time. So you've got Mercedes and Volvo making big rigs. You've got Kenworth and Peterbilt. Um, you've got BYD. And I've seen hands-on a lot of these trucks. They are already selling them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I say this a lot, the beauty with a commercial truck is you often get to know exactly what its use case is. You know exactly what range you need. You know exactly all the everything. Sure. And it either works or it doesn't. Make your decision. But when it comes to at least the Kenworth and Peterbilt trucks, I can tell you, they are breathtakingly expensive and you get 100, 150 miles of range. Right. right. For a lot of use cases, that, that works. For a lot, it does not. If you want them to be an over-the-road, long-haul, situation we're going to need the mega chargers which don't for any real purpose exist yet yeah. uh, you're going to need a lot more flexibility and the real problem tesla may have is with a commercial product the stated range needs to be the actual range <laughs> it looks as though from everything we've heard these do have the actual range about you yeah. know whatever it is yeah. four or five hundred miles mm -hmm. and that's great but i can tell you that uh, the EPA numbers we use are imprecise for well, a lot Brian, of real world cases. Brian, I will tell you that uh, I've always, I believe you because uh, I drive 80. I, you know, sometimes we have our things set at 90 and every once in a while my phone goes off telling me that I've exceeded my team. <laughs> so when I'm out on, a, on these freeways, I sometimes go quickly. And so it looks like my range is all messed up. But coming home from Vegas the other day, I, you know, I just wasn't in a hurry and I just kind of set it at 77 the whole way home. And guess what? The range was almost exactly right. <laughs> Speed is a real factor. <laughs> a One of the big benefits that Tesla has is they're very slippery. They've got great 
coefficient of drag, and that means that you get a chance to reap some benefits that other vehicles don't. When they've got a big grill that has to scoop in all that air, um, it becomes a problem uh, that you can't mitigate. But when you've got a car that's slippery, all of a sudden you get it up to 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, and all your efficiency, you can oh just watch God. it, just watch it drain away. For me, it's not a problem. I don't mind, you know, yesterday on the way back from thanks, uh, from Christmas, we, oh, sorry, yeah, yesterday, two days yesterday. ago. <laughs> yesterday. Oh, yeah. Which Three day? days ago. <laughs> on the way back from Christmas, my oldest son is very picky. He did not eat anything, mm. anything at Christmas. Mm. So we stopped at McDonald's, plugged the car in, and by the time we got inside, got our order, and got back to the car, we had added... I want to say 40% to the battery, 50, some outrageous, probably 40% in the time it took to make two McChickens. Right. That is no problem. That is no problem at all. Uh, but for a semi, semi, for a commercial business, you need to actually hit the range. Uh, there is construction delays for sure. It could be that there is a shortage of contractors of the caliber required to build something like that. Right. Uh, because this is a very large and sophisticated facility. Um, and if I expected Tesla or Panasonic to start their build out, and it appears neither has. Yeah. Now, as we said on your channel earlier this week, there is now flight restrictions over yeah. the site. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Zane who flies over it, Zane Igler has been unable to fly over it. They're very restrictive. And that's terrible. If you don't have a PR department and you want us to do it for you, that's fine. But let us, let us do it. So could you check with some of your Chinese sources and see if you could get a satellite uh, trained on that facility so we could? One thing I looked into at one point for counting cars was to see if I could find someone with a window close enough to the exit uh, of the <laughs> site yeah, and just right. leave a webcam running for me. Yeah. Uh, but there was nothing close enough uh that would have that could have been done for anything other than a prohibitive price yeah. and then i'd have to pay somebody to sit there and actually count the trucks and yeah. yeah and for what for what i mean i could get my production count accurate to within a tenth of a percent but for yeah. one factory right and it's a factory where we already have all the numbers current as of last week anyway wasn't worth it um yeah so that's interesting so your confidence in semi remains solid? At this point, my confidence is back up. First of all, I think that Elon, I think there's a lot of evidence that, Elon, that if I'm correct, that he was nervous last year and actually put the brakes on here and there. I think his foot is back on the accelerator and more than, and more than tentatively, I think that he is now thinking 2024, 2025 is going to be really good. And so it's time to start getting back in gear using all kinds of automotive words in that sense. Did you notice that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you this for people who hung out this long in the video, we've got a little treat for you because I'm going to tell you that Tesla has sometimes been able to execute in ways that make it look like they're time travelers. The decision to not make leases uh, purchasable in 2019 led to a glut of used vehicles that were being sold at outrageous prices in 2022. The decision to uh, remain full speed ahead when all the other automakers were pulling back during the pandemic led to an opportunity that others missed, that others could not capitalize on. And what I see happening right now with all the other automakers pumping the brakes on their EVs is that next year, the year after, as the economy improves, as rates improve, there will be precisely one world-class player properly poised to capitalize on this new wave of consumer sentiment in the positive direction. And this is going to, I am i have high confidence that in the next two years, we will see it looks once again like Elon is a time traveler. Yeah. And I wish to reassure the Time Control Council that this is not the case he has not divulged anything the inhabitants of soul three are completely unaware please continue on about your day so in the comments i guess i'd ask what did we miss what do we misunderstand leave it leave it like subscribe do the usual uh maybe uh throw some support who knows
uh, maybe check out Randy's channel if you're not too busy. I mean, he he does some work over there. And by some, I mean, it's a lot. He does a lot of work. Some of it good. So uh, I will, <laughs> I will uh, thank you all and uh, remind you to stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots uh, in a quieter shirt, I suppose. <laughs>